In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how you can take an existing Visual Studio project and using Git, add it to a new Bitbucket source code repository. Now, in this case, we're taking an existing project, taking the whole project and adding it to a new repository. This is required for submission of your projects. And one or two people have been having problems with this. Obviously, the correct way to use a repository for your source code is for version control. So you create the repository at the same time as you create the project itself. And every day when you work on a project, at the end of the day, at least once per day, you have the project in a working state where it runs and does something. You save the project, commit it to your local repository, and to push it to the online repository so this up-to-date copy is saved there. This is important because it means that if anything happens to your own computer, if the hard drive gets completely fried, you've still got an online copy of the work as it was. Now here we've got a very simple Hello World example. If I run it here, it just says Hello World and waits for me to press Return and it's going to disappear. It's a very basic project. So what are the steps? We need to do to add this to a new repository. Let's close this window. And here is our file explorer. Here's the folder with the project files in it. So we're assuming that we've already got Git and Tortoise Git installed on the computer. If we do, all we need to do is right click in the folder and there should be some options to allow you to create a new repository in the context menu that appears. So we just choose that. We don't need to worry about anything style, just click OK. So there's an option here to exclude the directories, but we just click OK, we ignore that. We get a warning to tell us that there are already files in the folder, but we just ignore that, we just proceed again. And we get a message telling us that it's created and then and you get to project. Now I have the folder options to show me hidden files, which is why I can see the .git folder. If you don't have hidden files shown, you won't see that. Uh, you also probably won't see the SU file as well if you've got hidden, hidden files. So that's created the repository. We now need to add files to the repository because Currently, if we were to commit that, there would be nothing added. We need to tell it which files we want to be used in the version control. So if we bring down this dialog, we now need to see a list of all the files in this folder and in any subfolder. We have to choose the ones that we want to be included in the version control. Now, we definitely don't want to include any SDF files. These are massive files, and these are effectively temporary working files that are used by Visual Studio itself. They are not in this, they're not source code, they're very, very large files, they're not needed. What we need for a Visual Studio project, we need the solution files, SLM, and optionally SUO. We also need the Visual C project files, VCX Proj. Again, I think it's mainly the first one of these that's required, the other ones are probably a bit more optional, but it's safe to include those, they're not particularly large files, they're quite small. Now everything else we see here is a file in the debug folder. We do not want to include any of these at all. Again, every time you can run compile, most of these files are going to change, but we don't need them. The only other file we need in this project is the actual source code, the CPP file. So make sure you add all of your CPP and .h files. Uh, so include all your source code files in the And then we see the other files at the bottom here. But again, the exe file, which is again in a debug folder. So again, you don't need that. It's just the source code and the project management files, the SLA, VCX, Proj, CPP, .h. If your project includes graphics, for example, bitmaps, whatever, you probably do want to include those. You wouldn't want to include anything that's required for the project to run. Uh, click OK. 
and to run those and then I'm going to click commit to make my first source code commit to the repository. Um, I have to type in a message here and you should always be in the habit of typing in a meaningful message, not just did some work. Try and outline what you've done. In this case, we've created a project and this is the creation of the repository itself, creation of repo, initial project commit. So we've done some basic message there. You can see we've got a list of the files that are included and a big list of all the files that are not included. So it's a chance to double check and change which files are going to be included or not included in your repository. And that says, click OK on that, and it tells me it's created the repository and added the files to it. That exists on the local computer only, it's not online yet. To make it online, we need to push it to an online repository. But we've not actually created that yet, so that's our next step is to actually create the online repository that's going to be used for this project. So if we switch to our web browser window, I'm already logged in to Bitbucket, and now I need to create a new repository for the new project. So your window might not be as busy as mine, and I've already got quite a lot of projects in Bitbucket. So I'll click on create a repository, I need to give it a name, and I should also give it a little description. Uh, this, is going, this is going to be a private repository for your course works. You should also keep your repositories private. Being private will mean that no one else can see your work, so you will also have to give me or anyone else you want to share it with access by adding them as users. I'm not going to show that in this example, it's fairly easy to do. Once you've created a repository, you can go to management and add users to a particular repository to allow other people access to it. So we can create the repository and we've now got an empty repository, so we get this dialogue here to say add some code. We can choose add it starting from scratch or if you have an existing project to add, which we do. So we'll choose that option. And we can see here it gives us a few lines of commands we can use if we're using the command line git interface. But as we're using tortoise git, we only need this URL. So the URL is the only bit that we need. So we can copy that. And if we switch back to uh, this dialog that I've left open, and we can click push, and then this option comes up. And you can remember where I pasted that first. This is where we actually add it. We're going to add a new repository, new remote repository. And the name of it is actually going to be bitbucketdemo.git. Just an invalid name there originally, so I need to call it bitbucketdemo.git. And the URL is exactly what I uh, copied from the previous dialogue. Add that, save it, and click OK. And that's the destination, so the top half I can ignore and just ensure that I've got the destination for the remote repository correct. Click OK there. And this pops up to show me that it's pushing the local repository online. I need to log into Bitbucket for this to work. <clears throat> Just enter my password. And there it says success. And it's added those changes. Now, if that's worked correctly, I should be able to see the source code. And in the overview, I can see it shows that I've pushed what commits. If I look at the source code now, you can see those files are actually now there. And you can see that the source code file itself is there as well as other project files. So you can look at the source code file that matches what was in the project. And you can also use this to review the history of commits of a project, or you can go and get previous versions. And from the downloads tab, uh, if you choose the branches option there, you can even download a zip. So you can download the project as a zip file as well. And that's about it.
WordPress, have taken a simple C++ project, created a repository on the local machine, committed all the files that I require to that, and then created an online repository and pushed the local repository onto the online one. 